subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. This show is in association with ABC Group, ABC Prime Thread Private Limited. Mobile number plus nine one nine eight four five zero zero two eight zero three. For more details, contact Mr. Deepak Malik. Phone number plus nine one nine eight four five zero zero two eight. Zero three. Namaste, Konnichiwa. Welcome to the new Pultewari show. Let's talk business. And we have today with us very special guest, and he is Mr. Rahul Narvekar, and he is the founder CEO of the Indian Network and Startup Studio. Rahul, welcome to the new Pultewari show. Let's talk business. Let's talk business. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And I'm sure it's going to be great because your vast experience of with startup, not only startup, you know, you're dealing with even Japan also, and you have guided like thousands of startup in India. So you'd love to know, uh, you know, there are so many startups who are, you know, uh, I think even the rural areas in India and who you could not reach there. So we'd love to know that how would you suggest to them to to pursue their dream. So we'd love to start from there. So Nupur, I'll tell you honestly, uh, uh, I'm a Bombay boy, born and brought up in Bombay for the first 28 years of my life, 29 rather. And now as I love to say, stuck in Delhi for the last 21 years uh, because I got married to a Delhi girl. Uh, what I realized sometime in 2013, uh, when I was doing Indian Roots, which was my a startup with NDTV and we were selling Indian artisanal products to Indians outside India, right? So apart from selling all the high-end designers like Sabesachi, we were also exploring all the artisanal crafts of India. And as is the trend in startups, I said, if I'm doing this, I need to understand. So I started traveling across what is called tier two, tier three cities of India to meet these artisans. And what I learned is for a lot of people like me who are brought up in urban India, okay, we found a different India when we went there. So India meets Bharat, as they say, right? And every large city, like from where I'm sitting in Delhi or even Mumbai or Bangalore, you go a little 100, 200 kilometers outside that, it's a very different world. And I saw lots of stuff and people like to glorify whatever. But what I also found was two things. One is if the India that I grew up in, or probably you were when you were younger, uh, if you were born in a large urban center and I was born in a, rural center, our worldviews were different, you know, our exposure was different, our ambitions were different, but today it's truly a flat world. So we are doing this on Zoom, but anybody anywhere in the world is on Zoom, right? And the media is now the mobile phone. So most of these kids who are now, even in the smallest towns of India, they know a Mark Zuckerberg, they know uh, Elon Musk, they know Bidhi Bansal, they know Vijay Shekhar Sharma, okay? And most of the guys, if you look at the Indian startup system uh, ecosystem today, all the most of the poster boys have come from a small town to a larger city and created stuff. Okay, so these are the poster boys for the boys back there or the girls back there. So you have a young girl in a very small town wanting to also create a unicorn today. That's the best thing about being in this country in this particular time. And, and, and um, the Zomato IPO, I, mean, uh, I believe, has been a game changer, right? Suddenly... The one dreaded word I used to hear always is there is no exits in the Indian startup ecosystem. It's completely changed. You know, there's now a full queue of IPOs coming out and all of that. So today there is deep, deep uh, hunger to create stuff. Uh, but yes, the challenge is uh, a lot of times geography is a constraint. Uh, a lot of times language is a barrier. So when I started traveling and speaking at conferences and colleges and campuses, uh, I met this young kid in a small town in Puducherry. And he was doing a startup and he was struggling with something for two years. And I picked up my phone and I solved it for him in half a minute. 
And this guy just broke down. He's like, you know, sir, I mean, I was trying from two years and you did it like this. So I got this aha moment for myself that I discovered that for a lot of senior citizens like me in the startup ecosystem, what is one phone call? What is one piece of advice? And sometimes a small check can transform somebody's life. So that's where India Network was born. And today from 2013, if I look at 2021 now, it's been a massive transformational journey for the startup ecosystem. Uh, I think 2019, I thought was an outlier year because more money came into the Indian startup ecosystem than ever in 2019. 2020, despite the pandemic, completely went far exceeded expectations to 2019. And 2021, the half part, despite the second wave, I mean, just before the Zomato IPO, so just to give you context, till 2019, uh, I knew most of the unicorn founders. I could name them, I knew them and all of that. Today, I don't even know the 11 guys, which are unicorns which have got created in the last six months, right? So it's that fast. I think we are in the golden era of the startup ecosystem in India. And this is the best time to be in India. So I'm very excited uh, to be part of this at this point in history. Great, wonderful. So, you know, you very beautifully you explained and definitely this is very flat world. We are talking through Zoom. And I'm so, so many, you know, thousand kilometers away. Uh, I think six or seven thousand kilometers away. So it's a, um, but still, you know, sometimes your background, sometimes your uh, surroundings, they don't support you, right? And just you feel, no, this is not for me. Even this, uh, there is a, uh, even the guy, rural India, he's starting, he has a dream, but he doesn't have money or his family is not that supportive. So what would you say in that case? You know, that time he would say, no, 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 that's really very distant dream for me. It cannot, these things are not for me. So in that case, and that boy, what should he do? So I would say today the challenge in the startup ecosystem is not lack of money. Mm -hmm. It is lack of clarity. So what I increasingly see when I meet these kids in small towns is because of the geography they are in, uh, that's the limiting factor. The flip side of it is even on their normal mobile phones, they're able to access the world. Hmm. But there's too much data, right? So if I go and meet a kid in a small town or when I wake up, I have all these messages from them. They will send me a business plan, which in all their innocence, they think is a great plan. Okay. But any investor would laugh at the naivety of it. Okay. So for example, I will get a, I yesterday got a plan from a small kid who's asking to raise 100 crores funding, okay, to create the new Netflix for India. Now, your logical mind would say, what nonsense, you know, how stupid is this? But he doesn't know that. He genuinely thinks I'm being, I have a dream, right? He has a dream, he wants to do it. But if you start engaging with this boy and say, boss, you, you know, your plan doesn't make sense. He'll start quoting bits and pieces. He'll say, you say, this is loss making. Oyo is also loss making. Flipkart was also making losses, Amazon. So they have, they take bits and pieces of whatever they can and they don't know what they don't know. So my most uh, famous uh, term that I use uh, in Hindi, it's called be beshiram. So one of the things I learned is that in India, we shame kids very early in life, right? Uh, so when you're studying in a conventional educational system, you are either pass or you're a failure. And I always stand up and tell these kids that failure is an event. It's not a person. So Nupur Tiwari can fail at certain things, but Nupur Tiwari will never be a failure. But unfortunately, we get labeled so early in life that, oh, you are a failure at this, failure at that. So kids stop trying new things. That's one. Two is all of them think that mentors like me can give them some sort of a magic mantra and it will solve their problems like this. So I'll say, I'm Brahma, ask me and it's done. And I tell them that doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Okay. So when I tell these kids that you have to be shameless in the sense, don't worry about being labeled failures or don't worry about what the world talks about you. Just focus on solving that problem. They throw the same thing back at me saying, you should be shameless. I'm being shameless. I'm asking you for money. But they don't know that, you know, this is a process. Okay. Then the third most uh, overrated thing is networking, right? So if I go and speak at an event or somebody sends me a friend request on social media, they're connected to me. We have exchanged a few messages. They think, oh, now I know Rahul. I've networked with him. So I'm entitled to get this from him. So because of this lack of knowing how to go about, 
Uh, a lot of them don't know how to pitch. It might be a great thing, but they don't know how to pitch to investors. They don't know how to develop an MVP. They don't know all this. That's the biggest problem of being in that geography. And of course, I I genuinely believe you become the sum total of the people you are surrounded by, right? So the reason you have so many, you know, people who are saying Flipkart, they call it the Flipkart mafia or the PayPal mafia, because if you are part of people who are of that mindset, you also absorb that energy. So your likelihood of success improves. But if you are in a place where nobody is encouraging you, you are constantly subjected to negativity and saying this is not going to work, this is not going to work. It sort of pulls you down. True. Exactly. So keeping the positive mind at that time, it becomes a challenge, actually. Absolutely. Right. So okay. So you know, uh, I think um, I uh, interviewed the uh, uh, vice president of Jetro, and he was saying that um, China has twenty thousand of Japanese companies. In the um, in the rest of the Asia, they have fifteen thousand of Japanese companies, where India has only fifteen hundred of Japanese companies. You know, so don't you think it's kind of it's a like again? I would say it's not. It's we are not failure. Definitely, you know, we didn't fail, but it's a kind of it's kind of you know feel like why is that? The question is there. So what do you think, Rahul? Why is that? Why we are not getting the what we deserve? India is not getting what India deserves. So okay, see, capital or industries are like energy, right? They will mm-hmm. find a niche and they'll flow there. So mm-hmm. if I'm a Japanese company, I'm looking to. achieve a certain business goal maybe it's cheaper manufacturing precision manufacturing or access to a certain market now when i look at it from japan i have options i have china i have asia i have india the biggest challenge i feel with india is a we are not one country as such even now we are like the european union right so if i come into a state it has its state law there is central laws and all of that okay our bureaucracy which is now getting better but still is very slow in a lot of things most of our laws are pretty opaque and japanese love stuff which is like black and white right uh, so if you, if if they go to china they get one permission and things roll very very fast but when they come to india they hit this wall and they say oh, it takes time then it's confusing then there are other challenges so i think that's where although there is a lot of effort being put on both sides to solve it okay but it is still a, a it's a very large country it's a very diverse country and uh, the challenges i think in the past what has happened is i've i've come as a japanese company i've dealt with one state government i've got everything approved that government falls a new government comes and says okay now this is not going to work so but i think i'll tell you what because what has changed dramatically now is that in the last few years because of what we call the geo effect because of digitization we are still the youngest country in the world uh, we are now creating all these unicorns the whole energy of india has changed in the last few years and i i think now japan is also recognizing that okay also the fact with what is happening with china as a country with the rest of the world a lot of countries especially including japan are now looking at india more as a hedge okay but yes uh, uh, there are challenges i i agree there are a lot of cultural challenges uh, the way we do in the, if, if if and i remember i was in in tokyo with sanjeev san and i think i had met the vice chairman of mitsui and i asked him i said sir you know uh, why is there so much you know not so much business between japan and india and he gave me a beautiful example he said rahul san basically uh, in india the way we do business is if two of us get together nipur says rahul let's do this i said okay let's do it and now tomorrow we'll try and figure out how to do it but first we have sort of principally decided we are doing it so he said in japan we are horrified because if you want to do something you need data you need research so Japanese will want to do a global research, then national research, then local research. Look at various scenario planning, and once all of that is there, you sit and then you say, "Should we go ahead or not go ahead?" So I told him, I said, "Sir, India as an economy and as a country has come from a scarcity, uh, uh, while a mindset, right, for a long time. So if you tell an Indian guy that we are going to spend six months to one year or a couple of years only doing research." and at the end of the research we might not do the project he'll say i don't want to wait that's a waste of time i'd rather do that the 20 other opportunities that i have okay so i think over a period of time what both sides have realized is so indians think that japanese companies are slow they are very slow in decision they're not they want precise things but again i think what this whole pandemic is also sort of uh, 
made very clear that you can't do 100 year planning in today's world you don't know what's going to happen next year or probably a couple of months from now so i think a lot of japanese companies are also realizing that they need to speed up decision making and secondly in india the biggest problem is we don't have precise data even yet right we we don't know if i get a set of government data can i trust it because it might be old it whatever right so as indians we are used to taking a very thin slice of data and sort of going with our gut and intuition and sort of jumping into it and then we'll figure it out on the way that's the beauty of being in india where is japan i i i love that him i said you know in in tokyo if i get off uh, into a cab and i tell him okay i want to go to shin marunouchi building he'll tell around say four and a half minutes and more or less we'll reach there in four and a half minutes because that's how precise the country is but in india i don't know what's going to happen in the next half a minute so whether i'll reach in four and a half minutes or 40 minutes i don't know so we are you know we we love we try one chaos as a country as a culture i think somewhere now that meeting of the minds has to happen that uh, we can learn a lot from uh, uh, the japanese and the japanese have to understand that this is a big enough market it's a big enough opportunity and if they don't come in others will come in if you look at the startup ecosystem of course there's softbank uh, there is terosan uh, binos vnext they're jumping in but the majority of the people who are making money in india are the western companies the sequoias of the world and the tiger globals of the world they are pumping in massive money and they are making massive exits also so so this is yeah exactly what is that they are very precise actually you know few days ago it was the end of the rainy season like the rainy season also ends on a day or on a time so that precise they are so <laughs> we even cannot imagine those kind of things and um, yeah so i think that is the that is called our indian jugaad and now whoever i talk to whoever you know interested in doing business in in india they are just coming to me and then saying so we have to learn how to do jugaad so <laughs> <laughs> great so you have made one word as part of a japanese dictionary at least true the first they are finding out what is jugaad <laughs> so yeah so here is the one thing i would like to you know discuss with you that um the indian startup yeah what is the way you explain that is very correctly you uh, explained that japanese also they have to be quite flexible and uh, indian also we have to be quite pr- precise you know so that is the trust thing also it comes there the japanese they take time to trust also people so uh, like indian startup they what would you like to suggest them because uh, japanese soft bank they are also investing a lot of money and other companies also they are interested so the indian startup who are really starting what would be your suggestion for those startup if they want to have the japanese investment so i think first and foremost what uh, i need to tell you is that japan has a huge huge positive uh, uh, thing indians when you say anything from japan we trust it it's the highest quality okay uh when it comes to japanese investors japanese businessmen japanese people the moment you say somebody from japan any indian will say oh i trust this person okay certain sectors like you said jugaad and i keep telling this startups jugaad is a one time thing your base layer cannot be jugaad you can't build something that has to have solid technology and that's where japan is miles ahead of the rest of the world and while uh, speed and scale are the mantras of the consumer internet space or anything in that space certain sectors like uh, hardware uh, core technology deep tech ai ml defense where you need you know research you need data you need precision you need investments for a longer term period and you need partners you can trust you can bank on then that country is japan i think what needs to happen is some middle ground and i i believe sanjeev sina my partner is working towards that a lot of other people are working towards that you need to create a sort of a platform where you have more engagement unfortunately in upur today what is happening is if i am a startup in india i have so many options this side of the world which is california and new york and singapore and uh, middle east also now coming up and europe and london there is very limited engagement from japan okay and then the moment you think of that you have heard so many of the oh, it's slow it's going to take time i don't know I've, i will not get a clear cut answer you know so then you say if i'm getting this why would i you know there is a lot, there is a hesitation and by the time they think of it somebody has made them such a great offer they've already taken the money from somebody else also startups is not just about money right it's about learning 
uh, it's about uh, technology it's about also trying to work with people where the chemistry is right and i tell every indian startup or business guy that when with japanese when you work with them they'll take their time but the day they shake your hand they will not get bothered by minor blips then it's long term okay so for a lot of industry where that makes sense what needs to happen is some sort of an exchange you know one things open up i would love to bring a bunch of indian startup guys for just a sort of a trip to japan and i love the country i mean i'm not being there for some time because of the pandemic but my son who's now 15 he's been visiting japan from when he was a toddler and he loves the country you tell him where first preference would be to japan okay so if you bring in more younger kids especially from the engineering colleges or what you do some sort of an exchange program where you just bring them to japan and expose them and then you do vice versa uh, you know you also start doing some awareness programs where you tell japanese investors you tell japanese uh, businessmen that it makes sense to start building that relationship with india because this is a this is going to be one of the largest economies of the world in some time okay and japan already has such a huge positive advantage with india if you're not leveraging it what's the point true wonderfully you described it rahul and uh, definitely you know i am not going to take your much time so would love to know few advices for startup indian startup you know for those who really planning to do something have and have their great ideas please your advices would be highly appreciated so i would say very simply uh, uh, valuation is somebody's opinion mm -hmm. ultimately profits matter you know revenue is good uh also think long term uh all of so when when i did my uh, startup earlier i mean my first few ones I, this is in the old economy 97 and 94 you know made a lot of money and lost it also very quickly in 2009 when we raised 8 million dollars from sequoia that was like headline news and we were like the poster child and in a few months people had forgotten about it then we raised 40 million dollars again you are at top and then people so this is all this it's all blips right so If it's great times if it's bad times it's not going to last forever what i've learned from japan honestly is thinking long term and when i went i remember i i was with in the shin marunouchi building with sanjeev and he was showing me an office and said this department they plan for the next 100 years and the immediate thought of all was like 100 years who's going to live that long you know the second important thing is people put nation first in japan even the the you know the common man i've seen that as a person that if i ask step stop and ask somebody for direction they will leave everything else and come to show you the place i remember i had i we were part of a study tour to study retail uh, in 2004 or 5 and we, at 130 at night we got lost and we asked this little bar owner and he was he was a single person running that bar for directions somewhere and he shut down his bar locked this bar and walked some 20 minutes away to show us the place because his impression of oh, this guy should you know they have come as guests to my country all of these values are what will stay long term so always think long term the, the unfortunate part is we have imbibed so much of the narrative from the west you know uh, fake it till you make it and you know hustle you have to take it in the right spirit and the last thing i will say is this is the most uh, i would say it's a, it's it's history in the making like the california gold rush is the best time to be a startup entrepreneur in this country so don't hesitate jump in wonderful wonderful yeah as you said that there are all those japanese qualities like taking the you know uh, making the nation first actually i just i'm trying to my best to take it to india these things i think these values actually not only for startup i think every way in our everyday's life we should just apply these things and that is those are the values i think made japan what japan is today so i think uh, yeah we should just uh, remember these things and uh, yeah let's start our as you said this is the golden th time to start somebody's business so with that it's always pleasure talking to you rahul and i'm Thank sure you so much. i'm sure that all the viewers they got really enlightened and they're going to start their business from tomorrow and they're going to just contact you <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you so much man. thank you so much rahul and thank you and we look forward to have you again on this platform sure thank you uh, subhratri good night west minasai and good namaste night. rahul namaskar
subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update